Today, I'm going to spill the beans on all the things that we did horribly wrong in the garden last year in hopes that one, we don't repeat our mistakes, and two, maybe you can learn something from them if you're a beginner gardener because they really, really were terrible and uh, things did not go well. But we're trying again, we're praying that third time is the charm and that we've learned some good lessons. So. Here are some of the beginner garden mistakes that we've made and how we plan to fix them this year. We've got some remedies in mind, so we'll see this time next year if they worked. So if you are a beginner gardener or if you enjoy gardening content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Give this video a like and thank you so much for being here. All right, so when I say beginner gardener mistakes, I mean we had some doozies and I'll insert some footage here of how things look. I'm gonna be honest, it wasn't all bad. There was some good, but there was a whole lot of bad. Okay, so the first big mistake that we made is we are starting with raw ground and we did not work out all the sod. So the first half of our garden, we worked out the sod really thoroughly and we prepped the soil really well for gardening and then we extended it. We doubled the size of the garden and the back half we worked the sod, but not enough. It was crazy how much sod was left. So it became overrun with weeds like that, like overnight, totally overrun with weeds. So if you're starting with fresh ground, get all the sod out or else you're going to fight a losing battle. And boy, oh boy, it was a losing battle for us. It was really horrible. <laughs> Nothing grew, just FYI, everything died everything died in the back half of the garden. Carrots, onions, Brussels sprouts, spinach, um, potatoes, gone because of weeds. Okay, over planting, getting super ambitious and sticking a ton of stuff really close together. Just don't do it because in your brain, you're thinking, I can squish these together and I'm gonna get twice as much because whatever the gardening experts are saying to me is obviously a lie. They have no idea what they're talking about because I know everything, right? Well, my friend, I will tell you, First of all, no, you don't know everything. And second of all, there is a reason if you give them space, the plant is going to produce even more than if you would cram them close together. You're gonna get less production from two plants than you would get from one well-planted, well-catered to plant. So take your big dream and vision, which is me, everything's gotta be grand and big, and just scale it down and scale it down. And when you feel like it's too small, scale it down a little bit smaller and start there. And then you can grow from that point. But focus on nurturing. If nurture one plant instead of planting five plants that you don't have time and energy and ability to nurture. You know what I'm saying? So less is more, essentially. Too many varieties. You don't need three different types of corn, two different types of green bean, five different types of breast milk. Just focus on one thing. Research your zone because I didn't even know my zone until last year, but I'm a zone 6A, so find out your zone and then stop over planting. I'm preaching to myself here, just by the way, I'm like fussing at myself. Stop over planting all these varieties. You don't need 10 different types of tomatoes and four different types of pumpkin. Just Focus in, once again, less is more, focus in on something you already know you like and try to do your best with that and then grow. This one is a really big one. Planting spreaders, that is not a technical term, but plants that spread near each other. For example, green beans are great for spreading. They go everywhere. And so are sweet potatoes. They just like wind and wander around. And so are pumpkins. And so if you really start planting green beans and pumpkins and sweet potatoes together, they're all just gonna weave together in this little crazy patch and you won't be able to find anything and then you've wasted your time and your money because you can't find the plants that you planted and everything's starting to kill each other out. So make sure you separate your spreaders. And on that note, trellis, trellis everything. We did not trellis and I had so much trouble over the fact that we did not trellis. We staked our tomatoes, which was good, but we got these, we've got these puny little wooden stakes. You need like a really good trellising stake, something to give really good support. So that's super high on the list for this year is good trellising. 
And then also like our green beans grew up our corn, which sounds lovely, like everything's working in harmony until the green beans literally are snapping the corn in half and the corn is dying. And also the green beans are dying because they're covered in aphids. It was a long season in 2022, <laughs> a long one. <laughs> like this video, you feel sorry for me. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so don't plant the spreaders close to each other. That's something we got massively wrong and trellis, trellis, trellis. Not staying on top of weeds and pests. And I would say we maybe get like an 80 on this for last year. We really tried. I really tried to stay on top. They just totally took over. If you don't catch it from the very first and start treating it with whatever form you want to treat it with, organic is the preference for us, but however you want to do it and want to take care of it, just you, you got to start quickly because the weeds are like that and the pests are like that. Like I said, the aphids and the potato bugs ravaged us last year and I was trying really hard, but they just kept ravaging and ravaging. So we're going to switch up some spots this year to try to help. But yeah, we're going to, we're going to look into some other options for pest control because woo, they were horrible. It's like once they figured out we were growing a garden, like the first year they didn't really bother us. And the second year they're like, oh, we know where you're at. We found you last year at the end. And now this is where we're living. And then the final beginner gardener mistake, which is not the final at all, but one of the things that we did was we bought, I bought a hundred pounds of seed potatoes. You can laugh. This is a good time for you to laugh if you want to laugh. Um, I'm just sharing this to help you. Don't buy 100 pounds of seed potato unless you have a gar, jar, gar, a gargantuan potato patch. If you've got three rows, then 100 pounds of seed potatoes, uh, 80 pounds of that are going to rot and do literally nothing but rot and have to go to the trash dump and you're going to waste money, which is what I did. So sometimes you have to waste money to learn the lesson, but this year, needless to say, I will be getting only 20 pounds of seed potato and not a hundred. Why did I go in to the farm shop and say, yes, I would like a hundred pounds of seed potato. I know that that fella has to be laughing somewhere even today about the fact that I would go in in my, I'm in my SUV, mind you, my new car. And I'm like, I'll take a hundred pounds of seed potato, please put it in my brand new car's trunk. He's like, what is, what are you talking about? What's wrong with you? So yeah, if you've got space for it, go for it. But I'm telling you friends, three rows, mm -mm, you don't need a hundred pounds. You just don't need it. Okay, and the final thing is not paying attention to the drainage in your soil. I thought, nah, it'll be all right, whatever. No, we had a pumpkin patch that totally flooded. To be fair, it was a pumpkin patch the year before, and it did not do this. It did not flood or go south at all. So I didn't have a frame of reference for this, but it was a really wet summer last year, and our pumpkin patch flooded, our pumpkins rotted, also, the back half of our garden retains a lot of moisture. It needs to be ditched. It lies lower down than the rest of the garden does. It needs to be ditched and drained, and it needs a hardier stalk back there. Sunflowers did well, but carrots, Brussels sprouts, and onions rotted in the ground. Literally rotted between the weeds and the water and the moisture. So I'm trying to put my bitterness away from 2022 and my sadness about all of the wonderful things that could have been, but sadly weren't, and focus on learning from the mistakes and trying to grow from that and make the 2023 garden as best as possible. Obviously, environmental factors, I cannot help the weather. I cannot help it. I can only do what I can do and pray for God to bring a good increase of our garden but I'm truly trying to simplify this year and make sure I focus on some simple heirloom crops that will give us the most bang for our buck and things we'll actually eat and not going so far as to where I cannot keep up. So that is the goal. Those are the things that we did wrong, the mistakes we made and how we plan to fix them. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment below. What was your biggest gardening mistake that you've ever made and how did you learn from it and fix it? I would love to hear from some more advanced gardeners and I will see you again really soon with a video all about what we're planning for our 2023 garden and I'm going to draw it out and just show you exactly what our plans are and then eventually we'll do a video on our planting. So anyway, thank you so much for being here and I'll see you again really soon. Bye!